promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. God, online classes are kind of weird for me, for my friends, and even for the teachers. When we decided that I would be taking the virtual geography class, mom got me a new laptop and a cool desk for my room. With online classes, you have to do a lot more on your own. And we figured out you couldn't really talk to people the same. It was all a big change. Like the other day, when Mrs. Vick sent us the test, we had to match the states with their capitals. As soon as we all looked at the test, we knew something was wrong. She had sent us the answer key with the test. We were supposed to finish it in five minutes. There was a timer and Mrs. Vic could see all of our faces. I could see Sonia's face. She knew. And well, I'm pretty sure she knew that I knew. And then we could both see Mac. He was looking in a way we all understood. But without talking, we all could see what we had to do. It was the right thing. Me and Mac and Sonia all chimed in and told Mrs. Vic it didn't look right and that she had sent us the answers. And then she thanked us for showing honesty and said that it was vital for any online class or any other class for that matter. We all started laughing a little. It turned out to be pretty funny for all of us. God, thanks for a new way to do school. And thanks for making my online friends pretty cool. Emma Jean. Hi, I'm Graham, and today we're talking about integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It's really important to be truthful always. To be yourself. To not hide behind a mask. Okay, fine. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Something fishy's going on around here. Why is Graham wearing a mask? Well, I messed up, and I don't want you to see. I did something I wasn't supposed to and I'm embarrassed about it. But we are talking about being truthful. So here goes. I'm sorry. I can't do it. It's just it's too embarrassing. I borrowed my sister's super special hair shining shampoo even though she told me not to. Now I'm scared to let you see what happened. I'm such a such a scaredy cat. This is one of the reasons why being truthful in what you say and do is so hard. If I show people the real me, they might laugh at me or make fun of me. They might think I'm a bad person. They might not love me. Well, you know what? Integrity is worth the risk. <gasps> nope, I'm not ready. In today's story, we'll learn why being truthful doesn't have to be so scary. Y'all come back soon now, partners. I'm never taking this hat off. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. One of Jesus' closest friends, the Apostle John, shared important words from God in one of his letters. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Let's see how this truth might play out today. Tori could barely contain her excitement when she showed her dad the small plastic rectangle with her face on it, her brand new driver's license. 
See, I can drive myself now. If you had a car. Mom said I can borrow her car some days. If you pay for gas. If I pay for gas. Cell phone. Phone off while I'm driving. Tori held up her phone and shut it off. That's right, and. No passengers, no driving after 9 p.m., full stop at every stop sign, music at a moderate volume. I got it. I guess you do. So can I borrow mom's car to go play tennis with Keisha? Please? Be home by nine. Thanks, dad. Even though Tori had been driving with her mom and dad for months now, her stomach did a flip when she first started the car. Driving carefully out of the driveway, her hands white knuckled on the steering wheel for the first mile until she pulled into the spot in the tennis courts at the high school. She was almost relaxed. Her best friend, Keisha, waved. <laughs> nice park job. Tori hopped out and checked her spacing. Yeah, okay, I'm a little crooked, but there's no one else here. The two friends played for more than an hour before Tori checked time. Oops, gotta get home. By the time Tori had stowed out her gear and fiddled with the temperature controls, Keisha was already gone. Here goes. As Tori backed the car out of the spot, she reached over to adjust the radio. I cannot deal with mom's music. Oh no. Tori braked fast. She put the car in park and hopped out. She had just hit the light pole and left a small dent in the bumper. It's not very big. Tori reached for her phone to call dad, but she had already turned off her phone for the drive. I I'll just tell them when I get home. Tori stayed tense the whole way home. Oh, they'll never let me borrow the car again. But it's just a small dent, and mom's car is really old anyway. Dad was working on his Jeep in the garage when Tori pulled in. Hey, sweetie, how was it? Tori opened up her mouth to tell dad about the dent, but she couldn't seem to do it. Fine, great. My serve's getting a lot better. Tori avoided mom too. She tried to go straight to her room and read, but she couldn't focus. I might as well go to bed. Most evenings, Tori used a gratitude app on her phone as a reminder to thank God for the good things in her day. Uh, Friday, let's see. But Tori didn't want to think about her day or talk to God at all. Finally, she turned off the light, but even so, she couldn't fall asleep. Next morning, she came down to find dad making French toast. Maple syrup or strawberries and whipped cream. Both, where's mom? She went out to get groceries. Should be back any minute. As Tori sat down to her favorite breakfast, memories of the dented bumper started flooding back. I guess I'm not really that hungry right now. The garage door opened. Mom shouldered her way inside, carting heavy groceries. Would you believe it? Someone dinged my bumper in the parking lot and took off. Tori's heart sank. She wished she could simply disappear. Did you see it happen? No, and they didn't leave a note, hit and run. I'll take a look. Uh, Mom? Mom glanced up and saw Tori. Hi, Tor. I didn't mean to rain on your morning. What's up? Uh, nothing. I, I mean, I, I'm gonna go out and rake some leaves. That would be super helpful. Rakes against the back wall. Tori couldn't meet Mom's eyes when she walked out the door. She raked as hard and as fast as she could, but she couldn't sweep away what happened. It's not like I lied, ex exactly. Oh, who am I kidding? Unlocking her phone, Tori scrolled through her messages for a message from her small group leader, Lisa, that she had sent weeks ago. Wanted to share. Oh, here's the verse. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Tori scanned the verse again and sighed. She dropped her rake and plopped right in the middle of her leaf pile. So, um, God, I really messed up. I mean, you know all about it, but I dented mom's car and I hid the truth. I lied. I'm really sorry. As Tori lay in the scratchy leaves, staring up at the bright blue sky, she felt a sense of peace for the first time all day. Thank you, God. After a few minutes, Tori scrambled to her feet, brushed the leaves off, and went towards the house. Mom, Dad, there's something I have to tell you. Tori knew she'd be paying to fix the car, and she might lose driving privileges for a while, but it was worth the cost to know she wasn't hiding the truth anymore.
A long time after Jesus died and came back to life, one of his disciples named John wrote this, God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Do you know what that means? It means with God, it doesn't matter if we've messed up or broken the rules or if we're embarrassed about something that we've done. We don't have to hide from him. He will forgive every wrong thing. With God, you can be the real you and he won't laugh at you or make fun of you. He won't think you're a bad person and most importantly, God will always love you. Yeehaw! Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for all the wrong things you've done and all the wrong things you'll ever do. That's why when you're truthful with God, you don't have to be scared. In fact, here's the one thing to remember today. Being truthful with God keeps you close to him. So when you mess up, don't hide it. Talk to God about it. Tell him how you really feel. It should feel good to get all these things off your chest. Like, maybe it will feel good for me to show you what it looks like when you don't listen to your sister. And when you don't follow the instructions on a super special hair shining shampoo bottle. No, no, no way. <laughs> I'll talk to God about it. See you next time. Oh, lather, rinse, repeat. Lather, rinse, repeat. Why didn't I repeat, God? Why didn't I? Oh, oh, you saw nothing. It's on. <laughs> oh. Hello, my name is Brandon, and this is the So and So Show because I'm so smart and so cool. Watch me do the robot. <laughs> Thank you, but seriously, I can't do the show without John. He's the best co-host I could ask for. John may be the best co-host out of all the co-hosts in the country, nay, the universe. It should be the John and John show. You should definitely tell John how awesome he is next time you see him, maybe in a tweet or a positively worded social media post, hashtag John is the grooviest. John, what are you doing? Nothing. Are you wearing the mask of me again? What mask? Hand it over. Come on, just a little more fun. No, it's confusing. Hand it over. Fine. Here. Thank you. What happens when I put this on? No. Brandon! Oh, uh, don't! <laughs> How do I look? Uh... Hello everyone, my name is Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. <laughs> What was that? Oh, don't worry about it. It's this. It's got a phantom. A phantom? Yeah, you know, like the musical, The Phantom of the Opera, where there's a guy in a mask that wreaks havoc all over a Paris opera house. It's it's like that, but but here. Yeah. Huh. He's the phantom of my basement. <laughs> <laughs> really annoying. Why is he here? Please don't ask that. Oh, you will know, John. You will know very soon why I am here. I, I hired an exterminator, but, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, okay, we get it. Should we um, invite him on? You know, maybe as a, someone who knows stuff? No, don't encourage him. He'll just try to take over. You can't stop me from taking over, John. <laughs> Just ignore him. What are we gonna do today? Uh, well, I, I thought that uh, we could play a game. Okay. I thought that we could pretend that we were sheep, right? And then one of us could... I'm sorry, I don't think I can ignore this. It's just too distracting. You've got to do something about that. It's actually not that bad once you get used to it. Hello, fellas. Oh, hello, Sylvia. Well, how are things today? Oh, just fine, thank you. How are things with you? Oh, same old, same old. Just trying to keep things clean. Wouldn't want things to get messy. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't want that. <laughs> uh. Oh, well. Guess I'll be leaving now mm, to do my job. Nothing mysterious. <laughs> okay, see you, Silvio. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Who is that, John? That's Silvio. That's my basement's custodian. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know your basement had a custodian. But you don't think this place keeps its shining glory all by itself, do you? <laughs> He's clearly the phantom, though, right? What? No. No. The, the no. Phantom wears a mask. All right. Silvio doesn't wear a mask. Yeah, but has he been here as long as the Phantom has? Yes. Does he s say creepy things and stare off into the distance all the time? Yes, of course, but all custodians all right, look, do that. Here's a picture of Silvio. All right. And now... <gasps> I left the stove on. Oh, almost burned my skedios. Oh, hey, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, guys. Hey, Kellen. Hey, Kellen. Hello, Kellen. Whoa! Uh, what was that? That? Phantom? Huh. Maybe, maybe you could talk in private. I'll call you. Will this work? Sure. Why not? I just want to make one adjustment. Whoa, Kellen, what happened? You look shiny. Well, that's a filter. Those are the buttons at the bottom of the screen. People use them for social media all the time. Filters make us look better than we feel. Well, they can also do this. Whoa, whoa. Wow. Do you guys smell something in here? Woo. <laughs> all right, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it here. Hold on. Oh, look at me, I'm so studious. Bum, 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 bum. Bah, 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 bah. Okay, bah, I think I've lost bah, control bah, here. Bah, bah, All right, filters bah, off. Bah, 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 oh, yeah, like I was saying, filters make you look better than you actually are. Here, I can look cool. Sir. Or I can be rich and famous. Hello, I'm rich and famous. Or you don't like where you're at? You can be somewhere else, like the beach. Or even Paris, France. Oh. Or even outer space. Ooh, I'm in outer space. You can be anywhere you want, and you can be anyone you want. With filters, no one has to know if you're sad or angry or embarrassed or awkward, filters can always make you the best version of you. Yeah, that's a good story, Kellen. 
I don't think he's gotten to the story yet. Ah. Uh, hmm. It's not really a story, actually. It's more of a verse. Check it out. God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. You see, God wants to see when we're sad or angry or embarrassed or awkward. And he wants us to tell him when we've broken the rules or made a choice we don't feel good about. He wants us to come to him unfiltered. Even though it may be hard to be yourself with others, you can always be yourself with God because he loves you and he will forgive you of every wrong thing you've ever done. And that, my friends, puts a smile on my face. Me too. Me three. Well, I'll see you when I see you guys. Bye, Kellen. You know, I think I probably do hide my real self sometimes, mm. but I've learned I don't have to do that with God. Oh, yeah, and I've learned only text LOL to someone if I've literally laughed out loud. Otherwise, it'd be like lying, right? I guess. I have also learned something. What have you learned, Phantom? This. What? Silvio? Yes, John. I know. I left no clue. What an unexpected reveal. Ah, yes. Reveal the question. What do you talk to God about? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it could be anything. I tell God about my day. My hopes and dreams. My greatest fears, like antique furniture. And now, I must leave you. Wait! Are you still gonna clean here? Well, consider this my two weeks notice. Is that the only way he can leave a room? What do you talk to God about? Talk about it with each other. Or just talk about it with God. Oh, even better. And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
It might feel like a little lie, but it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do, you'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You'll be living straight up